Hey guys, day four under house arrest. Hope you guys are holding up. Um, we are looking how Paul was under house arrest and how he responded to that when he wrote the book of Philippians. And so far we started out and he starts out with a prayer for the people that he's pray that he's he's writing to and, and his concern for them and his wishes for them. And then he turns into thinking uh, about um, putting all of this in perspective, in the perspective of Christ and Christ-centered thinking and how really got to look at the big picture as far as who Christ is and, and what that means for your life and for your circumstance. And so today, he's going to kind of turn his attention to the Philippians. Um, we're going to read verses 27 through 30. So, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come to see you or am absent, I may hear of you, that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Okay, so let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. You guys have an excellent opportunity here. You're not going to be out in public very much, but you are going to be around the people who matter the most in your life. You're going to be around um, the people that you live with, your family. You're going to be on social media. There's going to be a lot of fear out there. Um, you have an opportunity to show people your life and hopefully we can live up and, and live it in a manner that's worthy of the gospel of Christ. So he, Paul writes this and he's saying, I hope, you, I hope you're living your life like this. And here's what I want to hear back. He says, when I get news back of you, I want to hear that you're of one mind, of one spirit together. And that basically they're one team, that they're working side by side. We can't worship together right now. We can't be together right now. But what we can do is still be on the same team. We can still, through social media or through some of these classes, and we're in a time where the internet's going to allow us to spend time together even when we're not together. Um, we can be on the same team. We can be on the same mind. And we can put all our petty differences and ideas about everything away. And we can put Christ first and put his mission number one. And it says, not frightened of your opponents. Um, they're going to be people who take advantage of the situation. They're going to be people who try and put Christ in a bad light because of this situation. They're going to be people who try and take down the gospel um, based on Christians' reactions to this. And so we have to work in solidarity together with one mind, one spirit, pushing Christ and the good news that comes with that. Um, even though we do have to take precautions, we can still interact, and we have to make sure that that interaction is worthy of the gospel of Christ because the world is watching us. Absolutely, the world is watching how we as Christians are going to respond to this. And we've got to make sure that it's worthy of the gospel of Christ. So at the end here, in verse 26, Paul says, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. You may feel like you're suffering right now, having to stay home and stay quarantined. Just remember that we're all having to go through this as, as a team. We're all having to, to social distance and to stay away from other people and, and not go out nearly as much as we want to. Um, remember, we're, we're in solidarity in this. But also what's going on here with Paul is he's actually got actively people who are trying to... Um, put down his gospel who are trying to put him down and in the face of that he's saying that this suffering is actually for the sake of Christ and so like we've continuously talked about over and over again we've got to make sure that what we're doing here um, we're all in, in the same conflict we're all engaged in this spiritual battle against uh, the evil of this world and we've got to keep Christ first and in everything that we do make sure that we're bringing his name glory and that we're putting his his name first, and um, even if it matters, even if it means we suffer because of it. All right, guys, be safe. I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep me in your prayers as well.